Hi guys, good morning. So I hope you are fine today. Um, all right. So we will be talking about RC beams. So what we see in here is a beam of arbitrary shape. So uh, any sh any shapes of beam will be valid in our discussion so i will be teaching you how to solve rc beams uh, using a general approach okay so class whatever the shape of the beam is um the strain diagram as well as this stress diagram will not change so um in board exam if you are asked to to give the maximum compressive strain of concrete your answer should be 0 0.003 okay so the notation is c for the distance of the neutral axis from the extreme compression fiber of concrete and we all know that this distance from the stop going to the center of the reinforcement this distance is d therefore the remaining distance in here if we subtract this c uh, will be t minus c all right now Focusing on the strain diagram, let's do the similar triangles. Okay, so considering the lower triangle, uh, let us say, let us take base is to height. So base strain is to height d minus c. Okay, the same thing will be done uh, to the upper triangle. So base is to height. Simplifying. This is the strain of steel. And we, we know from Hooke's law that the stress is equal to E times strain. So this expression tells us that if we multiply strain by E, it becomes stress. So if this is the strain, let us multiply both sides by E so that this strain uh, becomes stress. So this is the stress. This is the E of steel, then this is the strain of it. So the notation, the proper notation for the stress is Fs. Multiplying this one, this is the expression. So class, we will be using this expression uh, to any type, to any shape of, of, of the beam that we are going to solve later. Okay, so here's the analysis. This... RC beam or RC beam problems are very easy because all we need to do are just three things. We will just take summation of forces horizontal equals zero, check Fs, and lastly, the summation of moment. This is the general approach class. Um, since the beam is subjected to two forces, even this beam is subjected to two forces, this beam should still be in equilibrium condition so that the summation of forces should be equal to zero. So directed to the left force should be equal to the directed to the right force, so C equals T. And we all know that forces are equal to stress times area. For concrete, the stress is 0.85 F prime C and area then for the stress of steel, Fs, for the area of it, As. Um, this AC is usually AB if, if the beam is a rectangle. But AC in general will depend on the geometry shape of this compression block, this grid color region. Now, uh, I know that 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 uh, you usually assume that tension is still yields but you should know that this problem can also be solved without using any assumption so with assumption or without assumption we will be checking this fs so later we will see how how it is being done so this fs from our derivation a while ago so for us to know the true value of fs we should have the d which is always given uh, unless otherwise it is the 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 quantity that is being asked and as well as this c we need this c so for us to have this c if we will obtain the depth of compression block from this from this portion 
then we will be using this code provision a equals beta 1c this is just like alphabets right a b c or a beta 1c then lastly class from our statics when there are two forces this one this two c and c c and t if we are we if we have two forces that are equal parallel and directly opposite to each other the two forces will produce a couple or moment and that couple or moment should be equal to the moment capacity of the beam right class uh, am i right uh, in saying that the, the the moment capacity of the beam should be equal to the moment acting so that summation of moment is equal to zero so we can say that the moment capacity of the beam is equal to the couple produced by these two forces so the moment is force times the distance between them the force could be c or t just choose one from uh, one of them because they are just equal then when you when you provide a reduction factor we know that the moment is now an ultimate moment okay so the the lever arm is d minus y bar though so this should be a y bar class no so usually this is a over 2 if if the beam is rectangle but oh, but uh, as what i've said a while ago we are doing a general approach now uh, this reduction factor is 0.9 if you are using the old code but if we are going to to talk about the new code uh, this reduction factor is no longer always 0.9 so here it is class here it is class um, let us just focus on the others this one because uh, this graph is for members that are spirally reinforced like columns take note that beams are not spirally reinforced therefore our category is this one so um, this graph class shows us the corresponding reduction factor to the value of the fs if your fs is very small and it is behind fy say for instance your your fy is 415 and your fs is only 300 then it is behind fy so what will be the reduction factor to be used okay by reading the graph you will you can say that the reduction factor is 0 0.65 but what if the fs is greater than 1000 megapascal Okay, so if fs is greater than 1000 megapascal project okay the, uh, the the reduction factor is 0.9 but what if the fs value is between fy and 1000 so you will read okay the corresponding reduction factor um so how are you going to do that how are you going to read uh, you might read the the graph inaccurately so let's do the mathematics uh, let us just focus on this graph and let's get the coordinates of its endpoints when we say coordinates uh, those are the x and y right so for this when we say x the horizontal when we say y the, hor the vertical so for this point the coordinates are okay say say the the horizontal coordinate first so the the coordinates are fy and 0.65 right then for this the 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 coordinates are horizontal 1000 vertical 0.9 so let us focus on this one the transition of of others not the spiral okay so let's use your analytic geometry knowledge let's do linear interpolation so when we say y this is for ver this is the vertical values then when we say x this is the that is the the horizontal values so uh, y is the vertical values 
Then y1, say, let, say this is the point 1 class. So what is the y of point 1? Point 0.65. What is x again? The horizontal axis, the fs. What is the x of point 1? Fy. How about this one? What is the y of point 2? Point 0.9. The y of point 1? Point 0.65. The x, okay, when we say x, uh, here are those. So, for x2, 1,000. For x1, Fy. Then, simplify this one class. Subtract 0 0.65 to 0 0.9. This is the difference. Then, cross multiply this. Okay. Then, uh, add 0 0.65 to both sides. Then, this will be the final expression of the reduction factor. So, you will be using this expression if our Fs is greater than Fy but less than 1,000. But uh, class, I will tell you, this reduction factor expression is not the reduction factor that is uh, that is present in the code provision. Uh, what is present in our code provision is in terms of strain. Well, stress, strain, uh, those two are very easy to deal with. If we are going to convert these stresses into strains, then this will be the expression. Strain, stress, strain. Yield stress, yield strain. 1,000, divide this stress 1,000 by, by the E200,000. So, it becomes 0 0.005. So, this is very easy class. Okay. So, this is the excerpt from NSCP 2015 for six, page 465 so just focus on the others not this one class no so as you can see the code provision is is uh, talking about strains what we discussed are uh, for stresses but the, but strain stress they are just uh, almost the same.